Okay, welcome back. Here we are finishing up chapter 10, the geometry 2D, two dimensional nodes. So we've got four more to go the polyline and polypoint, and then the uh, rectangle and triangle. And so let's start with polyline then. So, polyline is uh, line segments and it's line segments that are connected and this is different from the line set or at least different than the index line set that we saw where we had um, uh, the ability to make continu contiguous segments and then break them and then do other contiguous segments we don't have the ability to do that to make multiple disconnected polyline segments within the node, but we do have the ability, of course, to just create a separate node for the other piece and parts so you still can get the two different lines that you want. And so we have a simple uh, example drawn out here on, the, uh, on a diagram, and uh, this illustrates that if you want to get continuous, across all these things uh, where your shape is uh, uh, closed and uh, not just continuous segments, then we go from 0 to 1, to 2, to 3, to 4, and then back to, well, that wasn't straight, was it? What slide are we on, Doug? We're on the polyline 2D slide. It's 25. 25, thank you. Let's get straight and narrow here. Okay, well, good enough, I guess. Looks more like uh, what's SpongeBob's uh, sea star friend? Uh, Patrick, yeah, yeah. It's maybe not as good as Patrick, but uh, it illustrates that you do have to uh, connect back to the middle. It won't automatically close a shape for you. Okay, so. What could be simpler? Well, not much. All of these nodes are pretty simple. So here's uh, the built-in book example. We can see that uh, the line segments themselves are pretty uh, undescriptive here. Why? Because we've stripped out all the commas, all the white space. Since they're 2D, they're pairs. And so Let's check this out and see how we did on the numbers here. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And if we can figure out where these guys are, I think we're starting right here with 0, 1, 2, maybe not. <laughs> So the order I might not have gotten right. And then 6 and 0 are the same. And that's how we got a closed line segment, closed polyline. OK, let's uh, check out the tool. See, uh, we are getting support for pairs of uh, points here. And let's bring it up. Okay, here we are, polyline, and this is in the Chapter 10 archive. And we can see this time around, hey, look at that, the XJ3D is working on this node. Uh, we weren't getting support in all of the guys, but we did get it in this. I can click, drag, and rotate. And we can see, sure enough, it is a line. And it is in the plane. If we get directly edge on here, you can see that, sure enough, those points are planar. No surprise there, because the uh, coordinates are all 2D. We can also see that uh, lines will get drawn as one pixel wide, no matter what perspective they're viewed at. So we do have 
uh, more likelihood of not getting, not losing our, our polyline segments. Whereas with uh, polygons, since they're defined to be uh, zero width, where we go edge on, we might more easily lose it. Okay. And there we go. Pull up the editor. And not only can we enter individual points point-wise, but we could uh, <coughs> add or subtract lines from this. And you get a handy dandy little uh, index count in the uh, left column there so you can keep track of it. Okay, maybe one of these days we'll, we'll give you the ability to import spreadsheets or something like that, but that might be overkill. If you did have a set of points in a spreadsheet, then the best way to get them in there would be just to copy them as text from your other tool and just paste them right in. So, don't need to get too fancy here. Okay, so that's Polyline, and there's the uh, tool, tip, tool tips, and we might uh, confirm that, as is the case with most of the 2D nodes, that the field that matters here, line segments, that's defining the, nine, the lines, is indeed initialized only. So uh, once you've defined it, that's it. You've got it, and you're done. If you wanted to change that by animation, you would either have to be scaling it or in your script node, instead of creating a new value for line segments, create an entirely new node and route that node out into the scene. So that's how you would build new polylines at runtime. Okay, polypoint is our next one, uh, very similar to the point set we saw before, uh, except again, 2D. So uh, all of the rendering and uh, visualization and limitations that we saw before for points hold true. These uh, points that we've drawn here are exaggerated, trying to uh, uh, illustrate the uh, pixel-like uh, nature. So they're all supposed to be one pixel each, one picture, picture element. <coughs> okay, here is uh, the example, and if you look very, very closely, oh, excuse me, uh, very, very closely, you can see the points in here. Similar interface where we can add points, it's giving you the label there. <coughs> Calibration's off a little bit today. Etc. Okay. Um, unremarkable. Let's uh, jump out anyway, just to be thorough, and we'll look at the interface. If I double click on the XJ3D window, we can see it's working again for this one. And you can also see as we move it around, if you look very closely, I'm rotating right now. And the pixel sizes all look the same. If I zoom in, the pixel sizes still all look the same. Here we are zoomed out, etc. Okay, yes, we have a question. It's hard to see those. It can be very hard to see these on a screen. Uh, it depends on your display screen. Usually PCs or laptops will be quite good at it and you will see it as a pixel. When we digitize the video, it might be hard to see. Here we are with them all. I'm zoomed out right now and they're all collected together. You could hopefully see one bright magenta spot right in the middle. And then as I zoom back in, the pixels will start spreading out to 
until they're now starting to go off screen. Where they started disappearing for you may vary. Uh, uh, why would you care as an author? Well, if you're delivering content to people to view, they're probably going to see it just fine. But if you're showing co your content on a projector, on a big screen to lots of people, they may not be able to see it at all. So you probably want to test your setup, test it with some people beforehand, see if uh, the lighting matters, turning out the lights in the room may uh, uh, give you a better set of contrast. We certainly went for maximum contrast on this example by putting black in the background and a fairly bright color in there. So little tricks of the trade. Points up, remain, uh, at least for now, especially technique and how you would uh, work with them. Let's jump back just a little bit, uh, see if I can find it quickly. If we go back into the point slides and polygons notes, um, open those babies up. Uh, it turns out there's uh, been a resurgence of interest in point-based rendering in 3D graphics, so I recently added a nice uh, reference to that slide set. Where did I? <laughs> Where did it go? <coughs> My goodness, it's gone. I must have dropped it in the wrong chapter. Uh, the reference I'm thinking of is a book on uh, point-based rendering by uh, Marcus Gross and uh, Hans Peter Pfister. So let's just do a quick look up. No joy. Here we go. Jeff, maybe you want to drop that 60 seconds of dead time in there. But here it is, point-based graphics uh, book. So it's a collection of research papers. Uh, definitely a lot of very smart practitioners have uh, been working in this area. And it's, of, I think, resurgent interest in recent years because uh, with laser detection, laser detection devices, LIDAR, and other uh, scanning techniques, it's easier to collect very large uh, data sets of point information. And so getting effective ways to render these uh, point clouds is becoming more and more important. So uh, can further work be done with X3D? Yes, I think we need to get a point size attribute in there and uh, uh, cross-check it against some of these advanced techniques to see if some of them aren't stable enough to get adopted into the spec. Okay, so there's polypoint. What's left? We've got React Rectangle now. Rectangle 2D. And uh, what could be simpler? Well, not much. These are all pretty simple, but we do have to pay attention to detail. For example, where is it? I know how big it is. We give it a uh, size parameter, but we do want to pay attention to uh, uh, the location of the center of this thing. So uh, <coughs> here's our coordinate center. Um, it's at the center of the rectangle. And our typical XY rendering, so the single front side would be facing us. and. Um, our default viewpoint here is once again along the z-axis. So that would be the perspective of our z-axis on the diagram. And using the right-hand rule of x to the right, your right, y up, z out of the screen, then that gives us our z coming this way. And that's the front face of the rectangle. 
Okay, interface. Well, here are two rectangles. And these really are pretty darn simple because look at that. The size parameter in each one is all we have to specify. We don't have to give points for these rectangles. We simply use a transform in each case to uh, move them around to where we want them in 3D space. And uh, to make it a little simpler on the user interface, we gave you two entries for the X and Y. Should we have given you two on one line? I don't know. Uh, which, re which reminds me of a, of a tricky question. Uh, uh, let's see if you guys know the answer to this one. What's worse, uh, ignorance or apathy? What's worse, ignorance or apathy? Any, anybody know this one? Apathy makes ignorance, doesn't it? Hmm? Apathy breeds ignorance, doesn't it? Apathy breeds ignorance. Okay, there's one. Sorry. It's apathy. Because if you're ignorant, you don't know any better, but you're apathetic. You know? Okay, so pros and cons here. Yeah, anybody else? Ignorance is less. Right. Glad we covered this uh, so that you can know the answer. Uh, uh, my answer is I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> the decision may or may not be my problem. <laughs> Okay, and which illustrates this interface right here. If you can do it better, great. I'm, I'm proud of you. And go, go get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we have the same. This one does have a solid feel, of course, so we can go see. <coughs> so let's jump right ahead to the last one then. Triangle set. Set of triangles, each with three 2D vertex points. And then we list them in the vertices field. So uh, we don't have to worry about where the center is here because each vertex is a coordinate. And you can see from the interface that we can add multiple vertices. And when they're saved out to the XML, to the .x3d file, or to your classic thermal file, all you get is a line of floating point numbers and it better be a multiple of three, meaning a multiple of triangles, or you're in big trouble. It's invalid and not working. So it looks like we have a good set of uh, triangles here. What did I do wrong this time? Get out of there. Okay. Okay, so let's check it out. There was our rectangle example. Looks like XJ3D did just fine on that. Here's our triangle set. Looks like we did just fine on that. And notice that this uh, rendering here includes uh, an outline. Oops on that. Let's restart it. Notice some of those points are getting reused in there, or at least uh, they're pretty close, some of those values, because what I did was put the poly point 2D in the same scene. But once we get past that, we can look at each triangle set, and uh, oh, we put poly point and polyline in there. Triangle set, what do we have? Okay, triangle plus triangle. <coughs> and um, looks like we're supposed to see a bunch of other things in this guy too. Oh, I see what I did. I'm jumping into the wrong scene. My bad. Here we go. Triangle set 2D. There's our triangle set node. There are our values. There is our interface. And so the interface is trying to force you and drive you into only doing triangles. Okay, so now I guess we're ready to go to our final summary. And 
here's what it's supposed to look like. That's already 2D. Notice uh, that this is a pretty interesting example in that on the left we have the front side and on the right we have the back side. Why are they different? Because uh, some of the polygons in there were defined solid true and some were defined solid false. So uh, solid false means uh, we can see both sides on the right hand side. But if there's, we see everything on the front side because they're facing the viewer. Um, Okay, I think that's about it. Let's uh, jump to the example and then I'll show you a new resource that's emerging online. Here's our summary 2D. Uh, and that example intentionally exercised about all of the 2D nodes, but it looks like all we're finding in this scene are uh, We're not seeing all of the different 2D nodes in here. We can see the triangle 2D, the rectangle 2D, the line set 2D, excuse me, polyline 2D. We flip it around, we can also see, if you're close enough, you can see that there's points in there as well. There's a uh, uh, point set 2D. So that means XJ3D doesn't have full coverage. We could uh, launch another one see how this in reality does. But more to the point, I'd like to go to this new page we've created. In fact, we did this yesterday during the uh, uh, X3D working group call. And so we've created a, a table here that's listing player support for X3D components. It's on the web3d.org wiki site, which you can get to just from web3d.org and then the wiki page search around, but then uh, take us up there just so you see how to get to it. Go to the main page for the wiki. In fact, let's just go to the main page on Web3D. Here's Web3D.org. So X3D development, there it is, X3D wiki. Go there. Currently, uh, you can find this page of interest right here under uh, X3D documentation, where we started to try to keep track of who's doing what to make it easier for authors to see what browser will support what they're doing. So, a uh, little documentation at the top. Here's the table at the right. And you can see so far we've just done one. We did Vivity because they were on the phone call yesterday. The other guys are snoo snoozing. Uh, but let's go ahead, based on what we just saw, we'll edit the XJ3D entry. So let's see, I think what we want to say is partial support because they did some of the 2D nodes and that's a good thing. So let's give them credit for that. Okay, so how many of you have uh, folks have edited wiki pages before. It's, it's not so bad. It's uh, sort of like a, a thin down, soup down uh, uh, HTML, but not quite HTML, but it generates HTML. So if you're used to HTML, then you see what it is. So what we have here is a comment. We have plain text that I'm going to change from a question mark to partial. And then uh, all the rest of this is the wiki shorthand for how do I build a table entry. So do you need to care about this? Uh, no, I don't think so. But if you're interested in wikis, that's how we do the magic. And boom presto, uh, in the rightmost column we have XJ3D. And then if we go down to Geometry 2D, we see, okay, they're now credited with partial. 
And that's how we build a mountain, one piece of stuff at a time. Okay, so there's our player support page. Hopefully by the time you see this, watching the video or getting around to it, it'll only take us uh, two or three weeks to uh, populate it thoroughly. The trick on these things is not can we fill out the table, the trick is can we maintain it. So I believe uh, the group decided that they're going to offer a free membership in the Web3D Consortium if they want to be the wiki, wiki webmaster and keep some of this thing up to make sure it's consistent. Uh, we'll see if that works. We'll also let the member companies maintain their own pages since members have permission to modify the wiki. All right then, what's left? I think we're about done. We'll, uh, we've got our regular end of chapter stuff, additional resources. Uh, we do have some uh, prototypes here. These were mentioned at the beginning of the chapter. Uh, if you need to have 2D node support in Verma 97, well, we modeled them. We modeled them using index face set and script nodes, and we wrapped a prototype declaration around them so that they were repeatable. So if you're learning about uh, prototypes or scripting, these would be good examples to look at. It's also a good exemplar if you are a more advanced programmer, more advanced hex 3D designer, and are trying to add new nodes to the spec. This shows you how with prototypes we can extend the language, build examples showing how the new nodes work, and that helps you build consensus among others that yes, this is an important addition to the language, we see how it works, we will extend X3D and make it available to everybody as a built-in language construct instead of not so bad, an add-on language construct. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, if you're really serious about 2D graphics, then please uh, run, don't walk, and go learn about SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, and that is the uh, uh, primary standard for drawing 2D on the web. It's not commercial, it's royalty free, it's one of the uh, leading specs over at the World Wide Web Consortium and there's uh, about a hundred thousand pounds of resources and materials and uh, references there. Uh, here's a good page that links to a lot of work and uh, I guess I didn't list it, maybe we should. My favorite uh, SVG tool is called Batik, and you can find it on the Apache website. Apache being, of course, the, uh, the web server, among other things. And spelling is so hard when calibration's off. Let's try again. Apache.org. Royalty free, uh, open source, <coughs> Java. Very nice tool. Uh, and if uh, you look at the notes on these pages, you can see that if you have an SVG diagram and you want to get it into X3D, then the way to go is uh, uh, <coughs> the way to go is Batik. You could use that to load the SVG and export it as a PNG or a GIF or a JPEG. A uh, very good tool for that. We do not have built-in support for SVG in X3D. Maybe someday. Okay, chapter summary. We saw a bunch of nodes. Um, uh, they're all cool. They're all helpful. They're all simple. Uh, they're all repeatable elsewhere. Uh, we could use uh, uh, index line set or line set for polyline. We could use point set for polypoint 2D. We could use index face set for just about everything else. Uh, the circles and the disks and the arcs would take some computation, but nevertheless, they would be modelable there. To make that easy for you, we added the nodes. Further, Circle 2D could also be uh, done by uh, using a cylinder node and cap. That said, more goodies for us. Uh, here's the cross-reference of what those nodes are. If you scratch your head and wonder, how would I animate those again? The reason we don't have interpolators for them is because the access type is initialized only on those fields. You'd have to animate them in a different way, externally by scaling or, or moving around. 
Okay, here are a couple of uh, exercises. Uh, <coughs> everybody likes the Olympics, right? Jeff, is there anybody who doesn't like the Olympics? Have we found anybody? Uh, no, 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 everybody likes the Olympics. So uh, there's more than one way to do it. There's three different nodes that you could use right there to build uh, a rig set. Uh, you might also want to build a star, uh, maybe a more complex star, complex geometry. Since you've got scripts under your belt, it would be interesting to uh, write a script that computes the points. Or maybe just write a separate program in, in whatever programming language you like that's computing points and spitting them out. And if you can spit out the coordinates as text output, well, you could wrap an X3D uh, header around it and a shape and a, a node name around it. Okay. Uh, if you want to uh, work really hard on a very simple thing, then you might also try a simple uh, animation control where you build a, a pause and play and uh, the stop buttons with these shapes and hook them up by events to time sensors or interpolators. How would you do that? Ah, it depends. done it, but using our, our regular uh, parlance here, I think you could consider each of these to be triggers. Triggers in an animation chain. Okay, here are our usual references. But in uh, chapter 10, always helpful to read the spec, find out, and we're all done. So, that's it. Chapter 10. Geometry 2D.